Hello, I'm Katriana Aldershaw, Managing Director of Synthesio UK. This presentation is about the coming together of two worlds. The world of customer experience teams, who have traditionally used customer satisfaction surveys, call centre call logs and other internal listening posts as their main source of voice of the customer information. And the world of social media monitoring tools, which I'm from, which has been busy developing increasingly sophisticated ways to monitor, measure and analyse customers' rants and raves on the, on the web. And increasingly, my company in the social media monitoring world has been working with brands to find a way to bring together the data from both internal and external listening sources in order to gain a more holistic and meaningful understanding of the customer experience as expressed in the voice of the customer. Why? Because companies who learn to think like their customers are most likely to be able to delight them. And delighted customers are loyal, they tend to spend more, and they recommend you to their friends. And the secret to understanding what's going on in someone's head is to listen. And listening enables empathy, affinity, and much more targeted language and messaging and products. And importantly, more and more customers actually expect companies to be listening to, the, listening to them and get really, really upset if they think they're frustrated when they're not, they think they're not. This chart kind of gives you a view, a sense of our view of the world in terms of the types of customer information which come together to provide one true voice of the customer. There's both structured and unstructured content. And by structured content, I mean metrics like numbers out of 10, satisfaction scores, etc. Unstructured is free-ranging text. Um, traditionally, companies have listened to customers through channels that they control, like surveys and call centres. But even in this world, there's a mix of solicited, unsolicited, structured, unstructured. In the bottom left-hand corner, you can see, um, I've mentioned NPS, Net Promoter Scores, where companies ask customers to confirm how likely they are to recommend them to their friends and colleagues on a scale from 0 to 11. You can see the uh, appeal of metrics like that. They're very tidy, they're easy to share, and they're easy to track in terms of progress. But even with those sorts of surveys, the structured question is always followed up by an unstructured, open-answered question. And I have been really surprised in working with large organisations to find that how many of them have nowhere really to put that unstructured information, which is really rich and insight. It really is the, the why behind the what. Um, that content tends to end up in spreadsheets, stuck on different people's desktops, um, and isn't able to be easily shared around the organisation. But customer feedback from these direct channels is only part of the picture, of course, and this is where listening platforms come into the picture. Um, we have developed ways to harvest tweets, blogs, comments on forums, um, comments on Facebook pages and to present them in a digestible format which enables trends, weak signals and pinning crises and insights to be extracted from this morass of information. I mean, we, we do think of the web essentially as a pile of rubbish but within that rubbish there are some real gems and social media monitoring done well extracts those gems from from the from the rubbish, um, and because listening tools world is this world of unstructured content, we're suddenly finding ourselves quite well placed to work with customer experience teams to help them grapple with the unstructured content they have from surveys. Um, we have methods for analysing sentiment across large volumes of data. In Synthesio's case, we use human beings and we use a sampling approach where we're looking at high buzz topics. Um, we also use data visualisation to tease out patterns and connections 
and to help our clients navigate their way through the glut of data. And importantly, we're used to working in a real-time environment and customer experience data is inherently perishable. It, if it's not um, communicated across the organisation to the right people in a short amount of time, then its usefulness becomes questionable. I'd now like to talk about a case study which is based in the hospitality industry and this is a really interesting sector because as well as lots of unstructured content on the web, people's hotel reviews, etc., there's also a lot of structured metrics because a lot of the sites like Booking.com, Expedia, TripAdvisor ask people to rate their experience out of 10 or 5 or provide a percentage of people likely to recommend. It's also a really challenging sector for brands hoping to manage the brand experience, the customer experience, um, consistently across a large global organisation because our own experiences of a particular hotel brand generally particularly relate to the hotel we're staying in at the time. And so if you consider our customer, Accor, which has 4,000 hotels in over 40 countries, operating under nearly a dozen brand names like Novotel, Mercure, Softel and Ibis, you can kind of see the scale of the challenge for a centralised customer experience team. So they came to us with the primary purpose of implementing some sort of listening strategy which enabled a call to identify problems affecting the customer experience at their root and then to empower hotel and country managers to actually fix those problems as quickly as possible. We began working with Accor via, um, by undertaking a, a really extensive online reputation audit. Um, Accor was very interested to see whether there were similarities or differences between the type of feedback they had been gathering from clients via their own in-room surveys and what people were saying about their hotels online. And interestingly, we found that the comments online were overall a lot more positive, about 75% more positive, than they were in the in-room surveys. So people were kind of using those surveys as a complaint mechanism. Whereas online, when we review a hotel, there's almost an, a kind of altruistic component to it of sharing a great experience or you know, pretending that we're an amateur travel writer. We also found that the online voice of the customer is very much the voice of the uh, individual traveller, the holiday maker, rather than the business traveller. We moved quite quickly to a pilot, an expensive one, where we started listening to comments made online about a thousand of a cause hotels in three languages. We devised three layers of dashboard, a dashboard for each hotelier, a country level dashboard and a global dashboard. And within those dashboards, we incorporated custom key performance indicators and ways to enable everyone at a core to measure and track um, customer satisfaction and progress over time. When we rolled out um, across the Accor group, um, we ended up at the place we are now monitoring 4,000 Accor hotels. And each of the hotels is able to see how they're doing against four of their closest competitors in their local market. We're doing this in eight languages, and we now have 40 country-level dashboards, a global dashboard, and 4,000 dashboards, one for each hotel. Um, we analyse um, what's coming in from um, harvesting online conversations with the offline survey results. Um, so a core is still getting that holistic view of what customers are telling them. And importantly, because we've got KPIs built into these dashboards, staff rewards and recognition are now tied into them as well. The results have been very, very strong. Um, in the past year, there's been a 55% increase in a core's online reputation across the board. And Novotel has been a really strong performer. They've had double-digit growth in online sales despite there being a global recession. I thought it might be useful to kind of bring this to life by showing you some of the dashboard views um, available to hotel managers. 
the table across the top breaks down all of the verbatim we've harvested by the stage of the customer journey. So um, comments and verbatim about before arrival, arrival, guest room, etc. The Novotel, Novotel Hotel in this instance is the one on the top line. And they can, the hotelier can easily scan along and see how many negative po uh, comments in red versus positive comments shown in green they've received over the monitoring period. In this instance, it's over the last month. And you can easily spot um, problem areas. In this instance, they've only received 15 positive comments about guest rooms um, compared to 13 negative comments. If the hotelier clicks on those numbers, they get sent to the bar chart you can see here, where that stage of the customer journey is broken down into smaller steps. And you can see that bedroom cleanliness is a big issue here. There's a big block of red. If the hotelier clicks on that part of the bar chart, they are sent through to the slice of the verbatim that's been harvested, which talks about bedroom cleanliness. And here they can see that you know, people were finding hairs in the shower, they found they thought that the curtains were grubby, etc. So you can see how a hotel manager is now immediately empowered with the knowledge um, to make positive changes. So they can talk to their cleaning staff, um, ask them to make a better effort, they can have a look around the hotel the curtains and, and see whether they need to send them out for cleaning. So it's taking a whole lot of information from multiple sites across the web and bringing it down to some very clear, actionable insights. Here are two other reviews from the dashboard. Across the top, we have presented um, something called a Customer Satisfaction Index, which is a number based on the number of positive comments versus negative comments the hotels received. And remember, Synthesia uses um, human being analysts to analyze the sentiment. So we know that if something's tagged as a negative comment, it, it, it is negative. Here, our hotel has slipped to fourth on the table. In December, they were second, now they're fourth. And if you scan along, you can see that weak point, the guest room, along with the activities. But the guest room, 54% positive only. So it's showing in red because that's, a, um, that's not acceptable. If you look below, you can. Um, what we've done here is we've taken the structured metrics from sites such as Booking.com, TripAdvisor, Expedia, and actually there are four others I couldn't put on the screen. Um, and we, we're showing the hotelier in one one spot how they're doing, how they're scored, and the competitors are scored on all those different sites. And we've synthesised all those different ways of looking at, um, you know looking at things whether it's out of 10, out of 5, percentage likely to recommend, and given an overall score out of 10. And interestingly, they've slipped to fourth based on the review of the unstructured verbatim, and they're also fourth based on the structured metrics that customers, the scores customers have given them on a review site. So that's the core. I'd like to finish up with three observations. Um, based on trends that we've spotted in working on a number of Voice of the Customer programs. One of them is that, in most cases, the sentiment of customers as expressed online is a lot more positive than the sentiment they express via direct listening posts such as surveys and call centre call logs. It's great news, but it does mean that some calibration needs to occur when you're looking at sentiment across these two different types of um, channels, information channels, um, because there are differences and, and there's a need to, to establish what's normal um, and, and a baseline from which to track um, and, and reward and recognize improvement. The second is that we generally find that social media is the canary in the coal mine. If a collective uh, problem or crisis is brewing, it gen generally tends to show up online before it translates into lots of calls into call centres. Um, and this means that companies who are listening have an opportunity to um, resolve problems very early on 
before they have a big impact on overall customer experience and importantly before they turn into expensive calls into the call centre. Finally, in bringing together the two worlds of surveys and social, we need to bear in mind that it's really hard to ascribe social media comments to precise demographic groupings. And that's because when we all go online, it's an opportunity to redefine ourselves. Um, we can escape our demographic stereotype and become defined by what we like rather than our sex, our age, our socioeconomic grouping, etc. And this is great news for companies really wanting to better understand their customers. It's much richer in insight to be able to know um, what customers have in common in terms of shared likes and dislikes. Um, but you know, demographics can be very addictive. Um, a nice, tidy, you know, company-centric way of defining customers um, can be quite hard to wean yourself off. Um, However, it's something that needs to be done when we're bringing together these two worlds of, of social and, and surveys and call centre call logs. Um, and if we manage to do that, then we really will find ourselves able to truly embrace one voice of the customer as expressed by customers themselves. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found that useful.